So this video has no time limit. It's going to be as long as it needs to be. There's just too much juicy gaming news to ignore. Ah, don't you just love this time of year? The summer sun is upon us, the fresh breeze of air, the sporadic showers of a very British summer, and of course, new game reveals, announcements, and a whole lot more. We have an absolute ton of gaming news in this Foxy Games UK special. Every last droplet of PlayStation 5 news, as well as a dose of Xbox Series X, just for good measure. I am planning on uploading a video regarding Nintendo's 4K Switch Pro, which is heavily rumored for release in September, though we're told to expect a few third-party Nintendo partners to show off enhanced Switch versions of upcoming games, but I think that needs to be saved for another video, at least until there's something to show, right? In any event, getting the smaller nuggets out of the way, we're kicking off with a true Sega classic, making its return to a PS4 near you, and by way of back compat PS5, Sega's remaster for a new generation of button bashers and Evo Kings alike. Virtua Fighter V Ultimate Showdown is coming to PlayStation Pass. <laughs> My bad, I meant PlayStation Plus as a no extra cost addition to the service. Presumably Sony struck an exclusivity deal with Sega due in part to Sony's recent commitment to its Evo tournament, which will no doubt bolster the competitive roster of fighting games already on the Evo platform. Direct from the official Sega Virtual 5 website, here's everything you need to know. So the legendary fighting series returns with Virtual Fighter 5 Ultimate Showdown. You can challenge the greatest fighters in the world in the ultimate remaster of the classic 3D fighter, now featuring gorgeous high def graphics, new online features and the all new bone crunching martial arts combat of the renowned original. Master your fighting style to defeat all challengers in the fifth world fighting tournament and become Virtual Fighter legend. Experience the pinnacle of the virtual fighter experience as you play favorite classic modes such as ranked match, arcade training and versus. Take on challenges as you compete with up to 16 players in new online modes including tournaments and league and play classic virtual fighter 5 in glorious HD with updated character models, stages and cinematics. A PlayStation exclusive that is part of your PlayStation Plus subscription entitlement and a fighting game that is easy to pick up but extremely tough to master. Perfect for the beginner and the professional player. Virtua Fighter 5 Ultimate Showdown is available on PlayStation Plus from June 1st. And in other news, it's official. Xbox and Bethesda have announced its highly anticipated E3 2021 Xbox Game Showcase. Courtesy of TheVerge.com, here's everything you need to know. So Microsoft's big E3 event to showcase upcoming Xbox and Bethesda games will kick off on Sunday, June 13 at 1pm Eastern Time. It will be a 90 minute show. So that's what, 6 p.m. British summertime? Now, Xbox Wire's official Twitter account relayed the following. We're thrilled to announce the Xbox and Bethesda Game Showcase will be on Sunday, June 13. The show will be focused on games from Xbox Game Studios, Bethesda, and many game creators from our partners around the world. Aaron Greenberg, General Manager of Xbox Games Marketing. Now, exciting stuff, though Microsoft, more so than any of the big three giants, PlayStation and Nintendo included, has far more to prove going into this year's E3 due to the company's restructuring and recovery from the Xbox One generation. Still, things are looking good for Xbox gamers. As you may know, Microsoft completed its huge acquisition of ZeniMax Media, parent company of Bethesda Softworks, back in March, so this event will be the first opportunity to see what the two companies have been working on. The acquisition doesn't mean that all Bethesda games are now Xbox exclusives though. The upcoming Deathloop from Bethesda-owned Arcane Studios is debuting on PS5 and PC, but Microsoft's Phil Spencer has already said that some new titles in the future will only be coming to Xbox and the company's Xbox Game Pass subscription service. Service. There are a lot of potential titles that Microsoft could showcase at E3, more than likely another look at Halo Infinite following its heavily criticised gameplay debut last year and subsequent delay to holiday 2021. Then there's Psychonauts 2, seems tantalisingly close to release, especially after a recent update video posted by developer Double Fine. We'll probably get some news about the sequel. And Microsoft announced upcoming new titles, the likes of Fable Reboot, Forza Motorsport 8, Avowed and many other titles. Expect to hear or see more about those titles and other IP revealed at last summer's Xbox Showcase. Now, as for Bethesda, the smart money says we should 
finally learn, hopefully see more about Starfield and the new Indiana Jones game, though I don't expect Elder Scrolls 6 to get anything more than a mention. The title is some ways off, though Obsidian developed Avowed could be the perfect antidote while we wait. Now, as an owner of both PS5 and Xbox Series X, I'm, cre I'm incredibly, let me tell you, incredibly excited to see what's in store at E3. Now, I've had my jabs. I'm now certified 100% FOMO free. Keep it locked to Foxy Games UK for my candid thoughts and opinion on the Xbox Bethesda showcase event post show Sunday, June 13. Okay, so moving on to even more exciting news and quite possibly the future of next gen, current gen if you like, game development, the magnificent Unreal Engine 5. In fact, I was so impressed by this most recent Epic Games Unreal Engine 5 demo that I felt compelled to tweet that the next generation of gaming doesn't begin until Unreal Engine 5. That's how freaking impressed I was. Ladies and gentlemen, I had tweeted throughout last year and I have receipts that with PS5 and Xbox Series X, we are on the cusp of true movie production quality, realistic photo real game graphics. Hollywood, eat your heart out. Just look at the detail in this footage and regardless of what you may have heard, both Series X and PS5 are virtually identical in quality in terms of the demo. Anyone suggesting otherwise either needs an urgent eye test or they're choosing to see what they want to see, influenced by fanatical tendencies. And I'm not throwing shots at anyone in particular. Now a highlight of the demo is the face-off against an ancient giant movie quality creature called, well, the Ancient, which fires a heavy red laser attack that the protagonist Echo must avoid. With groundbreaking new features such as Nanite and Lumen providing a generational leap in visual fidelity while the new world partition system enables the creation of expansive worlds with scalable content. Valley of the Ancient is a rich and practical example of how new features included with Unreal Engine 5 early access can be used and is the result of internal stress testing and you're welcome to modify the project to make it your own using Unreal Engine. Epic also confirmed it's hoping to ship the full Unreal Engine 5 release in early 2022. So Epic Games are indeed wizards, magicians. This changes everything. The mind boggles when trying to think of the possibilities. Naturally, everything, yes, everything has its limits, but this is so far from where we are today. This advancement in game engines feels more than just incremental. It's totally compatible with Unreal Engine 4 projects and its multi-platform, so upgrades are seemingly integrated into the overall tools. Now, PC Gamer reported on the recent Epic Games release of a 110 gigabyte Unreal Engine 5 demo for would-be developers and those more than curious to see what's under the hood. The Unreal Engine 5 welcome video treated us to a ton of cool features. Your nanites, your lumens, your rich tea biscuits, or Oreo cookies all set to come with the early 2022 launch. However, the development tools and stunning vistas shown in the demo come at a heavy cost, and storage is one of those areas that's going to take the hardest hit. Just the demo sample project for UE5 Valley of the Ancient is 100 gigabyte alone. That doesn't even include the 10 gigabyte for the engine itself. Though ultimately, with the ability to directly import assets comprised of, yes, millions of polygons, anything from ZBrush sculpts to photogrammetry scans and a host of other super intensive features, it's fair to say the next wave of games are going to eat deep into that precious SSD storage space. Though after what we've seen, this is a small sacrifice for anyone really eager to try out the new Unreal Engine 5 features on a capable PC. Simply stunning and no doubt the future of game development. Okay, so keeping things moving at a pace, the Foxy Games UK main news feature, and I need to state exactly what I tweeted as I was witnessing PlayStation greatness on my 4K TV yesterday. Genuine reaction. Oh wow, Horizon Forbidden West on PS5 looks absolutely incredible. Games like this is the reason why I buy into PlayStation. I have no loyalty to a brand. My loyalty is to AAA high quality game experiences. I'm loyal to the experience and more importantly, my loyalty is to my wallet. And it seems all of PlayStation Studios, in this case Guerrilla Games, are simply on another level. Dang. And this is a cross-gen PS4 slash PS5 game. Not a PS5 exclusive per se, but a bona fide PlayStation exclusive, and it looks absolutely stunning. Now, 
one can only imagine that this project started well before PS5 came to market. I'd hazard, I'd hazard a guess and say on average three years pre-PS5 launch, so it must have started as a PS4 project and then upgraded for PS5 to take advantage of some of the set features, meaning it isn't even fully utilizing PS5 hardware and it still puts many other current gen games to shame. I mean, not to use recently revealed Dying Light 2 as the, the barometer, but uh, the difference in quality is night and day. Now, if Sony's PlayStation Studios consistently pump out quality production like Ratchet and Clank to Rift Apart and, well, this, well, you better start saving those coins because $70 or not, with Sony, you're about to get what you pay for, and that's high quality AAA game releases. Horizon Forbidden West's visual quality is simply staggering, but don't take my word for it. If you haven't already, I implore you to rewatch the Horizon Forbidden West gameplay demo in 4K on the official PlayStation YouTube channel, and it makes the stream look like a serious downgrade. Sony first party studio Gorilla Games shared 14 minutes of high octane Horizon Forbidden West gameplay of its gorgeous sequel to the still incredibly impressive PlayStation 4 hit Horizon Zero Dawn and running on a PlayStation 5, not a whiff of CGI or pre-rendered gameplay in sight. This was all in engine and from the player's point of view, yes, real gameplay. Let me tell you, if there were any flies in the room while I watched this, this trailer, my, my dropped to the floor jaw would have caught them all and that's how good it looks. And it's only a cross-gen title. Digital Foundry parent company Eurogamer.net had this to say, Aloy scrambles through dense jungle foliage before stumbling onto an oceanside settlement. All sandy beaches, deep blue water and vast rock spires on the horizon shrouded in the clouds. These, Gorilla later confirm, are the remnant of San Francisco, millennia into the future. And it's here that Aloy encounters machine riding raiders immediately embarking on some nimble combat, firing arrows and hurtling acrobatically around the environment to escape their attacks. This initial sequence ends beneath the waves as Aloy swims through gorgeous coral reefs, kelp and exotic fauna, fighting the current as she goes. Eventually she reaches dry land and encounters the raiders once more, this time choosing to take a more stealthy approach as she attempts to liberate her kidnapped friend. So with the raiders out of the picture, she returns once more to the jungle, scrambling up into the canopy for a better view among the clouds. Here we get a glimpse of Aloy's glider-like shield wing as she really drifts back to earth. Then all that remains is a quick sprint on the back of a hijacked machine, culminating in a boss-like confrontation with a fearsome metal dinosaur mammoth. It's a breathless, really, you hear I'm lost for words, right? This game is spectacular. It's a breathless careen through 14 minutes of gameplay with little time to take everything in. Thankfully, Sony opted to round off its state of play livestream by inviting Guerrilla Games to break down the action just a little bit further. Aloy comes armed with a range of new toys for this newest adventure. There's the aforementioned shield wing for starters plus the focus scanner which can be used to highlight free climbing spots around the dizzying environments. Aloy can utilize various tools and weapons like the pool caster, a grapple that can latch onto scenery before quickly retracting, really enabling Aloy to rocket across long distances or zip up walls for that lush underwater experience. Well, did you see the underwater graphics? Amazing. Aloy uses a diving mask that lets players stay submerged in the water for as long as she likes and boosts through any currents that she might encounter and it allows you to really do some exploration as well without that limit of you know losing your breath. Additionally as seen in the gameplay sequence a variety of machines can be overridden and mounted to speed up the overland travel as in the first game. Now combat has received many improvements and additions it looks far more fluid the spear can be used in close range combat for example and grants access to a range of distinct combos alongside a high damage charge attack and Velos surges offer their own tricks enabling players to knock back enemies among other things and more can be accessed from the weapon wheel including a slingshot with adhesive grenade and that can temporarily really store machines and bows with arrows that can strip armor and expose weak point spikes that can be launched into the air and really explode upon impact and it was impressive with smoke bombs even weapons that fall off machines all of which can be upgraded at work benches something familiar to many gamers so there's obviously a lot that they're holding back here i assume for 
an event closer to launch now it was a little disappointing as well there was no actual release date nor even release window but Gorilla says it will discuss more on that at a later date with further details set to be shared closer to Horizon Forbidden West's launch on the PS4 and PS5. Yes, it's a cross-gen title as I say and at the time of this recording very much still scheduled for a 2021 release. But another missed opportunity was Guerrilla Games could have offered a 60fps Horizon Zero Dawn update for PS5 users to make that wait for the sequel a little more tolerable though I suspect this is really still on the cards and perhaps GG are waiting to reveal more on the sequel closer to launch so there's still a chance we could receive a performance update in the interim. But Guerrilla Games official Twitter account had this to say. Thanks for watching our Horizon Forbidden West gameplay reveal. We don't have an exact release date just yet, but development is on track and we will have an update for you very soon. Thank you as always for your ongoing support. So keep it locked to Foxy Games UK for more on Horizon Forbidden West. But to round off today's news video, Sony PlayStation CEO and President Jim Ryan had a few things to say courtesy of PlayStationUniverse.com. Here's the full story. So Jim Ryan, president and CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment, has said during an investors relations event this week that the PS5 Standard Edition will start to break even in June 2021. Another area that really was the focus is one of console economics and Jim Ryan is pleased to say that the PS5 Standard Edition, as the one with the disc, will break even from next month's production and from then on the project is expected to become increasingly profitable. Right now, the standard edition represents the great majority of PlayStation 5 sales and they do not see a proportion changing greatly in financial year 21, the current business year ending in March 2022, but they do anticipate that as time passes and we move further into the cycle of PS5 that the PS5 standard edition launched alongside the PS5 digital edition in November of 2020, well, is the more expensive of the two models retailing for 499 US dollars that's 449.99 UK pounds this version includes a blu-ray drive while the other model is really digital only downloads so yeah eventually they should do both catch up and have some form of parity but I do see people going for the physical machine with disc far more than digital but whoa I don't know about you Given the obstacles and issues with next-gen console launches, it is absolutely insane to me that PS5 will break even, perhaps become profitable by June slash July. Believe me, if you have any notion of how the whole console manufacturing process works, it takes years for platform holders to break even, even to see a return, if ever at all. I mean, Microsoft has never made money on Xbox, any of their consoles, and that's by their own admission. But that's how loss leader products and sales have traditionally worked in the industry. But whatever Sony did, worked. Honestly, after a few quiet PlayStation months post PS5 launch and the news is now starting to flood in and the excitement levels are rising, Microsoft has it all to play for at E3 with its 23 studios. Obviously, not all products will be shown from all 23, but they only have 90 minutes. What do you expect? And a lot of Xbox Studio products are still baking in the oven but for, for sure get hyped get ready and get a ps5 and or xbox series x as soon as you possibly can because i have a gut feeling this generation is going to be a roller coaster of a ride and everybody is invited as soon as stock issues are resolved that is though what say you go ahead sound off share your thoughts and opinions on today's news because that unfortunately brings us to the end of this rather long video but let's continue the discussion cordially in the comments and for all your your gaming news rumor and plausible speculation yes hit the like button of course subscribe hit the notification bell and help us reach like-minded gamers so yes feel free to share the video consider supporting foxy games uk via patreon you'll find a link in this video description thank you for that extra support but that concludes our time together on this friday it was a pleasure hanging out with you enjoy your weekend and until next time play games not corporations <laughs>